All right, I am going to play an uh, interview. This is with uh, Flimsy Firewood. Uh, Ilya is his name. And uh, we, he couldn't be here today, but I wanted to make sure that we had a chance to chat with him, so I recorded this yesterday. I'll see you guys in about 10 minutes or so. things that, that people who have uh, heard you in interviews over the years probably know is like you're you're from Russia. Yes. So how did you get to Massachusetts to start working for Freedom? Uh, I got married and uh, moved to Massachusetts. And then I got uh, interviewed uh, for a QA position and then was hired full time. Cool. So you started actually in QA then. Do you remember yeah. what year that was? Oh, 2007, I think. Okay. So you yeah. so not a little bit after DDO first started. Yes. And so how did you first uh, start working as a primarily content developer at DDO? Well, I um, that's what they. It was funny because they gave me this. Um, uh, design test to for Lotro team, and when I actually got for the interview, they told me, "No, I'm actually being hired for DDO." So it was a kind of a surprise. So it's <laughs> now. Well, I guess that's going around. So now clearly, I I know. Since I know you're for blind signing me with those questions. Oh no doubt. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, there's always uh, people that come from one, go from one to the other here in the in the real world. So, uh, I know just. You know personally that you know how to play D and D. Uh, you and I have played some pen and paper ourselves, both Dungeons and Dragons and custom campaigns. Tell me a little bit about your D D and D history. All right, uh, hello, I'm here with Flimsy Firewood. Goes by the name of Ilya, how you doing? Hi. So, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. I haven't actually told you what I'm gonna ask you yet. But uh, I guess one of the first things that, that people who have uh, heard you in interviews over the years probably know is uh, you're, you're from Russia. Yes. So how did you get to Massachusetts to start working for Turbo? Uh, I got married and uh, moved to Massachusetts. <laughs> And then I got uh, interviewed uh, for a QA position and then was hired full time. Cool. So you started actually in QA then. Do you remember yeah. what year that was? No, oh, 2007, I think. Okay. So you yeah. so not a little bit after DDO first started. Yes. And so how did you first uh, start working as a primarily content developer on DDO? Well, I, um, that's what they, it was funny because they gave me this um, uh, design test to, for Lotro team. And when I showed up for the interview, they told me, no, I'm actually being hired for DDO. So it was a kind of a surprise. Nice. <laughs> now so I guess that's going around. Still. Now clearly, I I know. Since I know you're blind signing me with those questions, oh, no doubt. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, there's always uh, people that come from one, go from one to the other here in the in the building. So, uh, I know just you know personally that you know how to play D and D. Uh, you and I have played some pen and paper ourselves, both Dungeons and Dragons and custom campaigns. Tell me a little bit about your D D D and D history. About my D D D what? Uh, D and D history. History. Yeah. So like uh, how long have you been playing D and D? Years and years. Uh, first started in college, because when I came into this country for the first time, uh, I had a language barrier and a uh, table gaming club in uh, University of Maine at Farmington uh, was the place that was uh, took me in as one of their own, and that was that. Awesome. And what edition is your favorite? 
Ugh, uh, your own, huh? I know the truth of this. You like making your own worlds. Well, yes. Uh, <laughs> Each of those things is, um, each of the additions is interesting in, in its own right. I guess I, I would gravitate towards three point whatever because it gave you the most uh, crunchy flexibility to make your own character. But it has its own faults, namely the whole uh, having to pre-plan your career in advance from level 1 to 20 unless you want to miss out on all the prestige classes and so on. And that's kind of a no-no. Sure, sure. Uh, I also happen to know that you, you do design your own wor worlds. Um, I don't know how much you want to talk about them, but you and I have done some kind of game testing of your worlds, things like that. I've been in a monthly group with you for a while where we were doing your own kind of uh, RPG systems and things like that. Everything from simple, you have this kobold thing that I really dig, uh, to fairly complex stuff. Kobold? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, the uh, kobold rules. Yeah, th that, yeah. that game came from... Uh, university days that was the drunken parties where nobody wanted to get gm and people wanted to have fun and not worry too much about serious role playing but no uh, yeah well you know every game master is uh, hoping to be a game designer one day and when you become a game designer it doesn't stop so there is that do you remember what the first dungeon you worked on is or maybe one of the first, if you can't think of the absolute first. Uh, yeah, uh, it was in the... Um, uh, it was a pirate themed uh, in the Three Barrel Cove. Okay. The, the ridiculous puzzle that would short out and I had to cut it into four pieces. Cause, uh, you started early, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so for those who don't know, uh, if you've... Uh, looked at some of the most difficult uh, puzzles and quests in the game, some of the ones that we were just like, why would they torture me like that? It's his fault. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So what what attracts you to that kind of thing? Pain. <laughs> you just like the pain and suffering of the players? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's kind of, uh, it goes both ways because the UI to set up uh, floor puzzles in DDO is not the most forgiving thing. and it It's almost as much pain to set them up as to solve them because cool. there's a lot of linking and cross linking and back linking and missing one link and everything else falls apart like a card house yeah you know what's, uh, what's been particularly funny over the years is you know just based on community feedback you are responsible for some of the most loved dungeons in the game and hated that's what I was just going to say. You were also responsible for some of the most hated dungeons in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Polarizing uh, uh, audiences is a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good, good, good stuff. Now, you've also done some raid work. Yeah. Uh, and some of them came out better than others. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know, I mean, I think probably most, uh, inf well, you know what's funny? Okay, let me, let me, let me real talk time here caught in the web when it came out uh some folks really had a hard time with it but over the uh, years i'm sorry i still run it a lot which 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 caught, name the <laughs> caught in the web oh right oh. the the one where the, there is that npc that gets stuck on things and yeah yep. yep but you know people are still running it to this day so maybe you are doing something right coil 2.0 yeah <laughs> right. right, but you. What what other raids have you worked on? Uh, if you that remember, that and the uh, nameless one with the return to giant hold. I, I forgot the actual name for the. Uh, uh, the truthful one. Uh, yeah, so yeah. 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 Okay. The, the, the gotcha. I forgot the actual name of the raid. That's, <laughs> no uh, that's problem. embarrassing, but you know. No, that happens. Designers deal with. Uh, work in progress names not final names yeah that's exactly right it's it's actually kind of funny you mention that because there's a lot of times where there's an extra step of translation uh for the community team where it's like we hear it from the dev team called x y or z and then we have to translate to what it's actually called or what the right, players know it right. is and sometimes those things don't always match up right um, yeah floor, ca floor caves in the guy hopes around a bunch of giants come out and there is explosions yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, you, um, 
What are some of the other, your favorite dungeons that you got to work on? Well, the, the kobolds probably, the whole barrels and crystals and all that. That was fun because um, it was founded in the lore of the designers before me and the kobolds happen to be photogenic and soundgenic, if that's a word. That made it kind of an interesting experience, a different experience for everyone. Yeah, that's very cool. So, uh, you know, as often happens, both in Turbine and in the game industry, you know, you are not currently working on Dungeons & Dragons Online, but you're working on one of our big mobile projects that's coming out here. Yep. And uh, so what's it like shifting between, say, a large MMO project to, say, a... I don't want to say smaller because I happen to know for a fact that mobile projects are not at all smaller. They're, they're not <laughs> small. But, uh, but for a different sort of kind of audience like that. Well, uh... The UI is simpler, uh, the uh, tools are different, uh, the same people, so the development is still more or less the same, but uh, you're right that the audience expectations are different and uh, you have to uh, make sure that the game mechanics uh, translate into a simpler interface without losing themselves in the process so that you can do more with fewer interactions cool. but there is still you know a brainy part to it because otherwise that's sad nice i don't know anything else uh, you kind of want to add here hi mom <laughs> happy 10th anniversary ddo huh 